Do you think the interface segregation principle is only applicable to abstract base classes and common interfaces? Then you are missing one key aspect of this principle, which you should know in order to avoid the consequences of violating this principle, even if your design neither contains inheritance nor interfaces with multiple implementations. So here is the definition of the interface segregation principle. Clients should not be forced to depend on methods they don't use. I don't see words like interface, base class or inheritance in this definition. Do you? Nevertheless, let's quickly summarize the common explanation of the interface segregation principle because it is definitely not wrong, it just is only half the story, as we will see in a minute. Suppose you have a design containing an interface with multiple implementations or a base class with multiple derived classes. One day, you want to realize a new feature in this design which requires an additional behavior to be added to some of the derived classes. In order to still be able to handle all derived classes through an abstract interface, you think of simply adding the new API to the existing common interface or base class. But this decision would be a clear violation of the interface segregation principle, because all current and future derived classes would have to provide an implementation for this new common API, whether those classes actually need this new behavior or not. Such a design would cause obvious code smells like empty implementations, questionable dummy implementations or implementations throwing exceptions, which are not just a cosmetic issue but can result in severe and hard to find bugs. The solution is, as the name of the interface segregation principle already implies, to create a new interface for the new behavior, which is then only implemented by those classes which really require this behavior. The client code of this design then either gets the proper interface directly injected or uses a cast to test whether a given derived class provides the additional behavior or not. So far so good. But as already stated, this was only half the story. Reading the definition of the interface segregation principle again, we can understand the word clients also as regular classes which use other regular classes or interfaces. And the word interface in interface segregation principle we can also interpret as the AP surface of any given class. Now it becomes more obvious that the interface segregation principle applies to any design even if no inheritance or common interface is involved. Let's look at a concrete example. Imagine some application using a database. In order to keep the application logic decoupled from any concrete database technology, the repository pattern is used. This repository implements a single interface which provides the classic CRUD APIs to the application logic. So far, so simple. Now imagine, one day, we realize that we need to collect some diagnostic information about the database to allow monitoring and analyzing the health of our application. To query these statistics, we simply add another API to the existing repository interface. And with this pragmatic design decision, our design is now violating the interface segregation principle as the diagnostics module depends on the full repository interface, including all CRUD APIs it actually does not use. Now you might ask, but if the diagnostics module does not use these CRUD APIs, what is the issue then? One effect of this design could be that the diagnostics module gains additional dependencies it actually does not need due to the types exposed by the not used methods of the repository interface. Furthermore, any change of the repository interface requested by the clients of the CRUD APIs can cause an impact on the diagnostic module as every interface change is a breaking change for those classes implementing it. The diagnostics module might have a fake implementation for the repository interface to mock the actual database during testing. Assuming that the actual application logic and the diagnostics module are owned by separate teams, this interface dependency even results in a dependency between teams, which is probably quite unexpected from project and organizational perspective. Or consider tools and techniques which are based on static dependency analysis, like impact-based testing for example. Unnecessary module dependencies make such approaches either more complicated or less efficient. And last but not least, every change of the unused CRUD APIs requires an unnecessary recompilation and redeployment of the diagnostics module. In summary, violating the interface segregation principle results in a design where a change in one part of the system has unexpected side effects on other parts of the system. Now you might ask, are those really severe issues for my project? Maybe not in the beginning, 
Maybe you can simply compile, test and deploy everything all the time. But please don't forget that successful projects tend to grow in size and complexity and that team members might change. Such shortcuts, like violating the interface segregation principle, often appears harmless in the beginning but might grow into severe issues over time. So my general recommendation would be to be aware of the possible consequences of violating the interface segregation principle and to address such violations early on. And especially if fixing such a violation is actually pretty simple. We simply introduce a dedicated diagnostics interface. This small change alone already addresses half of the issues mentioned. If we now even move the interface into a separate package, we could also fix the unexpected module and team dependency. Of course, if the new diagnostic interface needs to be changed in future, this would still result in impact on its clients. But first, as the diagnostics interface is rather generic, we can assume it is more stable than the repository interface. And second, the dependency from the application logic to the diagnostics interface is not unexpected. It is even quite likely that there is an explicit requirement for the application logic to support the collection of diagnostics information. Now you might argue, wasn't that all obvious? Why would one add the diagnostic API to the repository interface in the first place? Well, there are some aspects to consider. Simplicity. Extending an existing interface is just simpler than extending an existing design. Time pressure. We are probably all guilty of having made compromises the last days before an important milestone. Or simply not realizing the consequences immediately. Developers who never experienced the pain of design issues probably have a hard time detecting such design smells. So here are some indicators of possible violations of the interface segregation principle. Interfaces or classes with many APIs. Interfaces or classes where APIs form logical independent groups. Some implementations of a common API throw exceptions. Not all clients of an interface need all APIs. In summary, Violations of the interface segregation principle can be detected when reviewing an interface from its client's perspective. Did you know that there is another important solid principle stressing the point of clients should drive the interface design? All you need to know about this principle you will learn in this video.